With multiple cameras and depth sensing phones, we all love the ability to control the background blur even after taking the photo. As a Photoshop user, how do you think it's doing that? Well, we think that maybe there is a source of information embedded to that photo that says to the photo, well, this object is closer to the camera and this object is further away from the camera. And that source of information is something that we can call depth map. So take a look at this example of the depth map. The objects which are brighter are closer to the camera. The objects which are darker are further away from the camera. And that's how it shows the depth of field in your photo. Now, what if you could extract this map that your phone automatically creates and use that with Photoshop? Imagine the possibilities. Not only we would be able to control the background blur professionally, but also select which areas to focus on, color grade according to the depth map. The possibilities are so, so much. In this video, I'm going to show you how to extract this map from your mobile phone photos and how to use it with Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. To extract the depth maps, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. But before we even get into extracting depth maps, we need to make sure that our phone is capable of doing it. Your phone needs to have a mechanism to measure the depth. Now, the easiest way to check this is also the easiest way to extract the depth map. And that's our first method. For that, all you have to do is to take a random photo with your phone in portrait mode. Make sure you're taking the photo in JPEG format, not any other formats. Just make sure you switch to JPEG before taking that photo. Also make sure it's a random photo because there can be some privacy concerns. All right. Once you take that photo, get it on your computer and open this website or you can simply Google depth map extractor. Just Google that. Click on the very first link. Click on browse file, locate your photo, select it and then open it. It automatically extracts it for you. Let's save it in the same place and it'll save it as a zip file. So let's open that. So I'm gonna extract the zip file using 7-zip. And here you will find the depth map and the image as well. So it separates both of those. Have a look. Here you have the depth map. As I told you, the further away the object is from the camera, the blacker it's gonna be, and the closer it is from the camera, the whiter it is going to be. So that way you can check. If your image is not compatible, it won't do it. So this is the original photo of my watch, this watch actually, and I placed it on my keyboard and I took this picture. And here you will find the depth map. So there you go, my friend, that is the easiest way to extract depth maps. And it's also a great way to check whether your mobile phone is compatible or not. Now, let me share with you how to do it manually if you're concerned about privacy or you're concerned about uploading your photos on a cloud service. And this is going to be pretty fun too. By the way, for Windows, the steps are different as opposed to Mac. So if you're using a Mac, skip to this duration. If you're using Windows, follow along. First of all, download Exif tool. So we're going to click on Windows executable and then save it. Extract the zip file here. So I'm just going to extract it right over here. And you don't really need this right now. So I'm just going to delete it. The next thing you're going to do is to rename it as just Exif tool. Remove the brackets minus K all of that jazz, just keep it exif too. Now we need to open the command prompt. So make sure everything is in the same folder. Exif tool and the image must be in the same folder to keep things simple. Now let's open up command prompt. Simply type in CMD, hit enter. <laughs> command prompt is open. Now we need to open this directory. This folder is in E images, right? So we need to go to E images. If you want to learn more about command prompt and how to get into specific directories or folders, do check the links in the description. In this one, we have kept it very simple. It's an E drive. So I'm just going to type in E and then colon, just like that. You see there, and it gets into E drive. Now we need to change the directory to E images. So inside of E, it's in the images folder. So I'm going to type in CD, stands for change a directory, and then images. Okay, now we are inside E images. Inside of that, we need to type in a code. I already have that code saved right in here in a text file. Simply copy that. All right. And then open the command prompt again and paste it. Now in here, where it says image, just replace it with the name of the image right there. So we are just going to go here and then just type in IMG underscore What's the name of the image? 5452. 5452. Similarly, let's do it right here as well. So with the help of the arrow keys, we're going to go there. 
and type in img underscore 5452. And once the code looks okay, hit enter and it automatically creates that depth map. So that is another way of doing it. Now for the Mac users, let's learn how to do it on a Mac. Similarly on a Mac, go to exiftool.org and install the Mac OS package. After that, again here, we need to open up the terminal. Now keep in mind, the image is in desktop for convenience. So on the desktop, we have made a folder called images and inside of that, we have the same image. All right, now let's open up the spotlight search and open up the terminal. So first of all, we need to get into the image directory. And by the way, if you want to learn more about how to work with terminal to change directories on Mac, well, I have links up in the description that will help you. Let's type in CD, which stands for change a directory, and we want to go to desktop. Okay, now we are in the desktop. Now we need to go to images. CD stands for change directory images. All right, now we are inside images and here as well, we need to type in the same code. And the code was, I have it written on my PC. It is exif tool. Here you don't have to have the exif tool.exe or any complicated stuff. Just type in exif tool minus B minus MP image two. And then the image name, the image name is IMG underscore 5452.jpg space is greater than img underscore 5452 underscore depth dot jpeg let me check if i typed it correctly exif tool minus p and minus mp image 2 everything looks okay let's just hit enter and it should create the depth map and there you go here is the original image that we clicked and here we have the depth map. Now let's learn how to use these depth maps to our advantage in Photoshop. So here we have the image already open and if you'll notice that if you open that folder the depth map is of a very lower resolution. Have a look at it 576 by 768 whereas the original image resolution dimensions is much higher. So you need to resize for that. So let's drag in the depth map, drop it into Photoshop over that canvas and resize it using the width and the height values. So here, we're going to type in the width as 3024 pixels. Don't forget the units, px, all right? And the height will be automatically set to that because this is checked. This maintains the proportions. Make sure this button is activated while you do that. Hit enter or return, and there you have the depth map. So how do we actually utilize it? First of all, we need to create an alpha channel out of this to be able to make use of it. So let's go to channels First, all right, make sure this topmost depth map layer is active. With that active, then go to channels. And then all you have to do is to click on this button. It'll make a selection based on what you see in the canvas right now. Once the selection is made, simply click on this button. It will create a channel out of this selection. Click on that and you'll find that it's the same thing and that's what we wanted. Let's click back on RGB and at the moment we don't need it. So let's delete this layer. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now to have a backup, always make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And let's say you wanted to add some blur, some background blur or focus on a specific area. This is how you would do it. Now keep in mind, this is destructive. The filter that we're gonna apply doesn't work with smart objects, so it's gonna be destructive, so be mindful. All right, let's go to filter, blur, and then lens blur. Now in here, we can choose that as a source. So in the source, simply choose alpha one and have a look at the background bird that it's already creating. Take a look at it. So here is the before, here is the after, and you can choose where you want to focus. So if you click on set focal point, if you activate that button, you can focus on the watch. Okay, you can focus in here. So this area is in focus. You can focus a little further there. So that area is focused and the watch and the objects closer to the camera is now blur. So see how easily and awesome it is to be able to focus on any area you want. So I'm gonna focus on the middle of the watch and you can definitely control the amount of background blur. So if you decrease the radius, the background blur will be decreased. If you increase it, 
it will increase and there are a lot more settings that you can play with. I'm gonna leave it right there and hit OK. And have a look at the background blur. So here is the before, here is the after. Just the focus on the watch. Now I do understand it's not very accurate if you look at the edges. It's gone a little fuzzy. But, you know, it's fun to work with and after all, you can always use masks to make it better. So, if I create a mask right there and if we take the brush, black as the foreground color, we can make this area a little more sharper if you paint right there. And also, we can paint in here a little bit more. I won't paint all the way around at the edge, but somewhere here, we can make these areas a little bit more sharper. So those are the little things that we can do. On top of that, definitely, we can do some color grading. So we can change it into black and white. I feel like that. So let's create a black and white adjustment layer. And this is an interesting effect. Let's increase the reds. So this increases the brightness of the reds. And also let's try the yellows. Wow, it just brings in the watch so well. Let's go down and decrease the blues a little bit to add a little more shine to this photo. On top of that, we can also add a color lookup table. And let's try in candlelight. That would look good on this one. Interesting, isn't it? So with the black and white, we can decrease the opacity. We don't completely want to turn it black and white. So let's keep it at about 75 and group all of the color grading. So select the black and white, hold the control or command, select the color lookup, press control or command G and let's decrease the opacity to about 80%. This is an exciting one. Now you can also use this step map for some additional color grading. So let's say you were creating a curves adjustment layer to brighten up the areas closer or further away from the camera. So you can use this by going to channels, hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail of the alpha channel that we created previously. With the selection active, let's create a curves adjustment layer. Now the mask is the depth mask. So if you increase it, you will notice the areas closer to the camera is getting brighter, right? If you want the opposite, we can do that as well by selecting the mask and pressing Control or Command I to invert the mask. So there you go. Light is coming from the back. Isn't that exciting? The more you explore, the more you will find uses for it. It's just a little fun thing to do to get the depth map from your phone Try it, just experiment it with your images. It's just a fun thing to do. Now, there are some software that will automatically extract the depth map for you. And if you're not too paranoid about privacy, you can always go to the depth map extractor online. Just upload it. It'll do it for you automatically. Or if you want to do the terminal way, fun way, command prompt way, that is also an option. And then you can use that depth map in lens blur or for color grading. The possibilities are up to you. You are the one who's going to imagine the possibilities. I don't know why I'm saying so many possibilities because there are. I hope you enjoyed this video anyway. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Oh,